Welcome back to Double Play with Brandon Walker and myself. We are doing something a little different today. Yes, we are. We're changing the format a little bit. It's a young show. It's it's in its infancy, you would say. Yeah, and I don't think we're like what we're doing now isn't necessarily going to happen forever either. No, I just I I thought instead of doing the the good versus the bad, or not right. even good versus bad, but good and bad, yes. we've been doing the good and the bad, where we would juxtapose a great sports movie with a terrible sports right. movie. This time, we're taking two sports movies and letting them clash mano a mano. Head right. to head, face to face, right, one on one. Yeah, like like we clashed this week, or when people were hearing this last week when you tackled me. Well, we rarely we don't clash. I I get the best of you at all times. That's not really true. But Is your sternum still hurting? Uh, it's feeling feeling. When's better. the last time you complained about your sternum hurting? I, that's how you know somebody's skinny as fuck when they even know how their sternum feels. I think I handled that fall pretty well for a you did middle aged guy on roller skates. You did, you did. I right. again. I did hold you up a little bit. I also spun around, so I, I didn't. Could, I did. I, I I cushioned your fall a little bit. You also tackled me on roller skates. I did tackle you on roller skates. I Looking mean, I, back, I, probably a bad idea. Yeah, but I thought it was fun. Who doesn't like a little rough housing with the boys? I don't mind that. I just wish I was on roller skates because then I could have planted my feet a little better. And you wouldn't have planted your feet. I would. I mean, you're you're m- you. you're much bigger than me. I you're would have. You. But at least I could have. No, but my sternum wouldn't have gotten. I hurt. dream of the day you're coming across the middle and and I can just uh, just. Well, the lay problem into is you, you won't like, be able to catch me, like Ronnie Lott, because you're fat and just slow. Ronnie Lott. First of all, I'm not. I I bet I can beat you in a foot race. Bullshit. You know that's not true. Don't be stupid. Give me a date in the summer. How about tomorrow? Give me a date in the summer. Why summer? I'll do it right now, motherfucker. Because I'm out of shape. Give me a date yeah, in the exactly. summer. Yeah, exactly. You're out of shape. Yeah, well, why don't you give me a date August when you're 1st. in shape? August 1st. When are you in shape? August 1st. I don't even be here anymore. August 1st, me and you foot race. Why don't you do it now? I'll do it, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it right now. Got to wait for you to get in shape. So gross. What do you mean that's gross? You're gross. You're in shape and you're just, you're, you're, you're. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know. I don't know what to call cool. this a shape, but it's something. Jeez, you're, you're gaunt. I, no, no argument here. All right. Uh, today, yes, talking about two movies. Yes, both came out around the same time. Sam two, Lott was two a, years apart. Sa- right? No, three years apart. No, one year apart. That's it, huh? I'm pretty sure Sandlot was 93 and Little Big League was 94. And you can look, but I'm guaranteeing you that's correct. I'm sure you're right. Sandlot came out in 93, uh, yeah. and wow. then uh, Little Big League came out in 94. April 7th, 93. We got June 29th, 94, which is wild that, that they put it out in the summer, in the summer yeah. which I, I know why I found out, but it's uh, strange in hindsight. You know, it, it, as we do this podcast together, that nobody listens to or watches? No, people do enjoy it very much. Well, they enjoy my part. Well, that's not true. But anyway, uh, as we do this, we learned that pretty much back in the early 90s, every April, you were getting some form of sports entertainment in a movie. Every April, every you were just getting a baseball movie, you were yeah. getting a sports movie. Now it, it's like uh, we get a sports movie once every two or three years. Oh, a little aside. Can I take a little aside, a little rabbit trail? Yeah. Have you watched Air yet? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. So good. I loved it. Really good. Just in, uh, I guess. Fantastic. I don't know if a 25 year old could watch Air and like it as much as we did because it is absolutely a time capsule. It is, and it's nothing that you don't. I don't even say I really learned that much. I kind of knew it, but even though it's still, the cast is so likable and it's just interesting. It's really yeah. well directed. It's brilliantly edited. It's a terrific movie. It's really good. It's the be- it's better than the movie we saw last year. Gooch, did you like Air? It's okay. Don't act like you're on the show or anything. Just, just fucking update your grinder account over there. <laughs> oh man! Wow. Oh, I don't need to update my grinder account. That thing's buzzing. <laughs> um. <laughs> I did. I did enjoy Air quite a bit, though. I, I, did. I, well, I came out of the theater and I immediately texted my dad and I said, "You got to go see this. Yeah. This is an ultimate dad movie." The, I tell you what. I as soon as I got through watching it, I contemplating hit and play again and just watching it right back. Because oh, so you watched it on Prime. I watched it on Prime. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, <laughs> my God, we're lucky to live in this time. I just because I didn't go see Air in the theaters, and I was like, "Well, now used to if you missed a movie in June, mm-hmm. you'd have to wait till November." Oh yeah. Now. What what did air come out eight weeks ago? Yeah, like a month. Yeah. yeah, so so I just watched it at home and it was fantastic. So good, and I didn't have to pay for it or nothing. Awesome soundtrack, great soundtrack, great soundtrack. But the visuals, like nineteen eighty four, the nineteen eighty four ness of the movie is what sucks me. And I was five years old. Nineteen eighty four is really when I was gaining consciousness. I would yep, say it, right? that's when I was gaining consciousness of the world around me, and I remember things and just the the where's the beef, the the music, the, the movies, cars, the cars. 
everything yeah. about it was just a, like a warm trip back into my childhood. It's so you see, we're lucky to live in this time. I, I'd get, I'd pay a lot of money to go back. And live I would pay a, a grand amount of money to go. I would, I would say there's a, there's an argument for 1984. If you put sports and music and movies and pop culture as a whole, 1984 might be the peak. I say 86, but I think we're in the same way. Why would 86 beat 84? Let me just throw 84 out there just very quickly. 84 in the movies, you got your, uh, you got an Indiana Jones movie, you got Ghostbusters, you got Beverly Hills Cop, you got, and I'm missing a ton of them. Uh, Police Academy, uh, I'm missing like three or four huge ones. Um, the like there's this graphic of what was out in june of 1984 it's crazy yeah and it's insane it's insane it's in karate kid 284 as well karate right? kid i believe yeah. there, there's just incredible movies out in 84 and then the music you got bruce springsteen michael jackson's popping off prince is popping off like all these things in 84 sports you have the magic larry first nba finals mm-hmm. uh which went to game seven uh you have the olympics that year you have the michael jordan nba draft like it's an absurd sports year too 86 you get tyson you get uh, a yeah. better world series of mets uh Red Sox. I think the TV was better personally. Like Family Ties, Cheers were better in '86 than they were in '84. It just the shows had just more time to kind of get their legs, and the movies were pretty good in '86 too. I, I think '86 is, and I like the music. I know you're right. '84 had the bigger like iconic albums, yeah. but I think like the overall like top forty list in '86 was a little better. But I mean, we're we're splitting hairs here. I mean, we're talking about the same thing. And I, it's like that going back to that time. Yeah, I I don't, uh, and and also. Music. Nintendo was 86, right? Uh, no, it was 85, actually. It split the so difference. there you go. So you get so, Nintendo so, in 86? Um, movies in 84 and 86, move, music in 84 and 86, they were all just so much bigger. Everything was yeah. bigger. Everything was bigger. Well, it wasn't as segmented. Now yeah. everything's segmented. Like, you know, when you watch MTV and now everyone's watching the same thing. Coach, uh, you have a laptop in front of you. Just give me the top 10 movies of 1984. Because I'm missing the, the problem is Here, I, my mind can't go forward until I solve this problem. Here's from MovieRankings.net. We have The Terminator. Yep. Amadeus. Mm-hmm. Spinal Tap. Paris, Texas. Well, this isn't. This is not box. This office. is not the box office. Oh, okay. Yeah. Give you me the box, box office. office. The ten biggest movies of 1984. Because Ghostbusters got to be way up there. Which one was was it? Temple of Doom. Temple of Doom was the was second one. 84. Yeah. Then yes. Raiders of the Lost Art was 81. Right. Which has. Right. Uh, Here's Karen the box Allen. office. Oh, yep. yeah. I was horny tweeting about Karen Allen this morning. Uh, Ghostbusters, Temple of Doom, Gremlins, Karate Kid. Gremlins, Karate Kid. Gremlins. Yes. Police a, Academy, fantastic. Footloose, Beverly Hills Cop, S- Star Trek Three, Search yeah. for Spock. In terms of Endearment, Romancing the Stone, Splash, Purple Rain, The Natural. The Natural. Yeah, like 84 was a Red beast. Dawn. 86, you got Top Gun, which I don't love as much, but uh, Back to School, uh, yeah. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, yeah. Stand By Me. I think we can all agree the 80s were better. The Fly is such a good movie. Rocky IV came out in 86. Like, 86 has some good movies, too. 84, I think 84 takes the movies. And 86 takes the music? It might be a push, but then 86 is the TV, and I think 86 takes the sports. 86 also has the Super Bowl of the 85 Bears, which was a big event. Um, Terrible Super Bowl, though. It was a bad Super Bowl, but it was a huge cultural oh, event. Yeah, well, like, they so, were I mean, gigantic. This, Refrigerator Perry was even on yeah. Saturday morning cartoons. They had like, the Super everywhere. Bowl shuffle. Yes. They, had, they had all that. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm glad we, uh, we went through that, that none of that has anything to do with our movies today, which is, which are little big league and the sandlot. Right. Now I'd like to delve into your mind a little bit. 1993, we would have been 14 years old. Uh, 13 for me, 14 for you when this came out. Cause you're old as fuck. We're the same age. We are, but I'm younger. We're born in the same year. Yeah. The year you turned 14 is the year this movie came out. Yeah. Okay. You were 14 when The Sandlot came out? Yes. You were. We were 15 when Little Big League came out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you re, did you watch either in the theater? Because I didn't watch either in the, in the theater. I watched Sandlot in the theater, and I loved it. When uh, Little Big League came out, my dad was really sick. Yeah. And I didn't... 94 was this weird year where there were a lot of movies I missed because he was basically sick the entire problems, year. Yeah. Um, so he didn't die until December, but he was pretty sick. So it was hard for me to get to... Movie theater wasn't close to my... Yeah, where I live, so it's kind of tough. So I missed the movies because there's no reason I would have missed this. Right. So uh, I didn't see either in the theater. Uh, I saw them both probably when they came out to, to VHS. Um, this movie right here is one of the more beloved baseball movies. If you ask people their favorite baseball movie, this is going to come up a lot. It's one of my. This, yeah. this holds a special place to a lot of people. Yes, it does. I like this one more. I like Little Big League more than The Sandlot. Uh, I think it's a better movie. 
I think the baseball is better. I think it's a better story. I think it's better all around. But people will fight you over this one, The Sandlot. So here's the big difference between these two movies. Yeah. Little Big League is a very smart movie, especially for kids. A very smart movie about uh, about baseball. Yeah. The Sandlot's not about baseball. Right. It's about growing up. And it's about nostalgia. It's about your friends, about having that summer when you were a kid. It's much more Wonder Years than Field of Dreams. Like, this is about growing up with your buddies. Yeah. More stand by me, if you will. Camaraderie. Or this is that magical summer you spent yeah. with your boys. So yeah. this is really... This, it, baseball is just... in. The, you can think about it, the whole third act. has nothing to do with baseball. So baseball is the vehicle that, that, that right. presents the story. And this is more of a baseball story. And hence, the baseball is more pronounced in this one, too. Yes. Um... I can't really make an argument that this the little big league is about growing up because it's really not. It's not at it's all. Just a, it's just a cute little story. But a lot of people look at this movie and then the and this and and the concept of eleven year old boy inherits the twins and makes himself manager and that's a stupid cu- cutesy story and they don't give this movie a chance. But this movie is a lot smarter than that. This movie is very well written. This movie is it, this movie is good. Mm-hmm. This is not. It is a. Both of these are made for kids. Yes. Both of these can be enjoy- enjoyed by adults. They're uh, yeah. at all times. At all times. Like Rookie of the Year, which came around similar, yep. was a kids movie and that you look back at now and you roll your eyes. See, I I had to rewatch that again. I haven't seen that in many years. So that I can't. But that was a kids movie. Yes. Neither of these are solely kids movies. These are these are about kids, but they're both timeless. They kind of are. Well, Sandlot's easy to be timeless because it's a period piece. Yeah. And it's about nostalgia. And it's yeah. like everyone has nostalgia, no matter when you grew up. And you always had your friends. This is, this is, I would say, not really timeless, but it is smart enough to overcome that. So, for instance, a lot of the players in this are all guys from the 90s. Well, yeah. We had baseball cards of. So, it's kind of fun for us to see these old players. I, if you're 20 years younger than us, you're going to have that same connection to this movie? Probably yeah. not. So this movie, The Sandlot, is a terrific snapshot of growing up as as a kid in the 60s, early 60s, whereas this is a great snapshot of actual baseball in the early 90s. Randy Johnson shows up. Yep. Ken Griffey Jr. shows up. Wally Joyner shows up. Oh, my God. Sam David Cohn I mean, shows there's up. There's about 15, 20 major league Palmero, players. Palmero. Uh, uh, Pudge. Really yeah. Like, everybody shows up. Yes. And, and I, I love... I love this movie, Little Big League. I like The Sandlot. I don't think The Sandlot deserves its reputation of being as beloved as it is. Yeah, I love this movie. I have a special place in my heart for this movie, but it's not it's about... It's about The Sandlot. Yeah, Sandlot, excuse me. Um, it's not about the baseball, though. It's about... Because that's how, what me and my friends did when we were that age. But it is a baseball movie. The Sandlot? Yeah. I don't. I. I really just like it. I think it's about camaraderie. It's also like I was. This kid moved in the Sandlot. The lead moved to a new town when he was in fifth grade. I did yeah. the same thing. So it's like really relatable. I didn't have any friends when I was there. Just new town, whole new area. Or now. Or now, right, right, right. No, you're my friend. So it's it's a it's a lot like yeah, like Field of Dreams is not about baseball. It's about fathers and sons and dream and and and, and what it means to live a life. Yeah, correct. Yeah. This this does have deeper meaning than the baseball that they play, and this one doesn't. Right, and that's okay. I agree. Yeah, but I still, I I still love Little Big League so much. I I I like the Sandlot, and whenever I put out on Twitter, the Little Big League is a better movie than the Sandlot. People lose their minds. They lose their minds. They can't stand it. Now I'm going to say it to you right now, right in front of your face. Little Big League is a better movie than the Sandlot. What do you think? Um, better movie. So. That's complicated. We'll figure it out. We'll, I got some categories. We can put it together. I don't. I don't hate that take. I disagree with. That. I don't hate it. My issue is, and you've been kind of, you've been very negative about the Sandlot. I feel like you constantly kind of shit on the Sandlot, and it's almost like you need to use the Sandlot to prop up Little Big League, which is unfair because Little Big League on its own is a very good movie. Well, I think that's one hundred percent what I do because I feel like Little Big League is the single most underrated sports movie we have. It is the single, it is not looked at as a classic. It is not looked at as this big thing. And it deserves all the love the Sandlot gets. So in order to give Little Big League the credit I think it so rightly deserves, I have to take shots at the Sandlot a little bit. I have to juxtapose it. And I have to compare it and say, listen, you all love this movie? This one's better. I just don't think it's fair to either movie. And I, I think it's, it, I think it just shows you maybe how, it, you know, you your heart is bankrupt, you know? You're, you're kind of a soulless creature 
Did you just con- con- did you just accuse me of having zero morals? I uh, zero heart, I guess is what I said. I have no heart. Yeah, yeah. Because I take shots at the Sandlot. Yeah, for no reason. The Sandlot's just doing it. I thing. told you the reason. I, I I'm propping this well, movie why up. Why can't use like this? Because nobody believes you. Nobody. You, you think have people to believe them, you. You have to give them. You have to give them proof of concept. You have to say, I love this movie so much, and it's so good. It's better than that movie, and I know you love that movie. You've spent hours upon hours upon hours, per, you know, talking about a fake sport on a podcast you have. You think anyone believes anything you say ever? <laughs> First of all, do you like the TV show Cheers? Oh, I love it. Great show. Well, that's not real. That bar is not real. Mm. That's scripted. But they don't pretend they're, they're real. They're not actually drinking beer. Right, right. right. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> so in professional wrestling, that's not fake. That's a scripted form of entertainment. Right, that's fair. Right. Right. But why so do don't they call pre- it fake. But they pretend that, but they act That's like a scripted real. form of entertainment. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. like this is and that yeah. is. So don't belittle it. It's not fake. They take real risk and have they real do. injuries. They do. So I want to bring a wrestler in here, a six foot five, two hundred seventy pound wrestler with muscles popping out of his neck, and you tell him it's fake. I'm sure. He, would he have a, a a leveled discourse about it where we could, you know? No, he'd probably fuck you up. Then that doesn't sound very much fun for me. I already got leveled once this week. And I did that. Imagine, yeah. imagine somebody. Oh, no, he would kill me. I never said I was stronger than a wrestler. You said you said it was fake. Yes. The, 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 it's not fake. The results are scripted. Is Cheers fake? Are movies yes, fake? Are yes. Mo- it's fictional. Yes, it's not real. Do you view them as fake? Yeah. Or do you let them entertain you? I let them entertain you, but when I shut off, I'm like, oh, that was a good story. I wasn't real. I don't, I don't really think when I'm watching well, a science I, fiction movie that people think, are going to Mars. Do you think when I watch wrestling, I, 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 I get depressed because one of my friends, my, one of my favorite wrestlers has been beaten and it, I, I'm scared he's in a bloody pulp and he's going to the hospital? No, I understand that it's scripted and fake, but not fake. Scripted. <laughs> Anywho, just for my point. Thank you. Anywho, the Sandlot. <laughs> Let's start with the Sandlot. Okay. Came out in 1993. Yeah. Who directed this movie? David Mickey Evans, who Tell me who David Mickey Evans is, please. Yeah, David Mickey Evans is an interesting guy. So he sold two scripts, uh one for a movie called Radio Flyer and this. And Radio Flyer is a, also a beloved movie. I never saw I it. I think so. uh in Glass, I think Glass as time goes on. I think yeah. um but both of them were very much in demand for studios. But that was a nostalgia piece too, yes, wasn't it? Yes, and yeah. about, exactly. And both uh, scripts sold for over a million dollars each, which is a lot at that time. Um, and then his career is completely disintegrated, really. He he wrote Ed. We do not have a drag strip outside this office. I wouldn't think so. I think we just had a race. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, um, but he, he, he wrote Ed? He, he, the movie we did, Ed? Yes. The movie with Matt LeBlanc and the monkey. Which you would think... The guy that wrote The Sandlot wrote Ed. Yes. Okay. Which I don't really understand because this has a much better grasp on baseball than Ed does at any moment Has a much better grasp on reality and everything. Everything. I feel like he must have done a lot of drugs after he sold I think some people... I mean, uh, you ever seen the movie Gross Point Blank with John Cusack? I'm aware of it. It's a really good movie. And that guy wrote the script. It's a great story. It, it, and that was it. And that's he hasn't written really anything else of note. But he's like... He says afterwards, he's like, I just had one good story in me. And I think David Mickey Evans probably just had like two good stories in him. Radio Fire, this one. That was pretty much it. And then once you have that... And that's... Hey, how many people have one great story in him? So that's pretty good. But I think this was pretty much it. Which is funny. It's also pretty similar with... But this one too, it'll be good. So uh, I don't know how well the Sandlot did when it came out. Uh, pretty well. Yeah. Um, it's certainly better than a little big league. Oh no, I, I would say it doubled or tripled little, the box office a little big league. Like with the, the Sandlot coming out was a thing. I remember the Sandlot coming out, and I remember people going to see it. I remember, I remember everything about it. Made I just, thirty-two million domestic. Uh, was never number one, but opened at number two. Uh, a tough week though. It started indecent proposal with Woody Harrelson wow. and Demi Moore and Robert Redford. Yeah. Um and then it was number two the next week, which means pretty good word of mouth. So people like it. Give me the other movies I could have seen in the theater when I went and saw the Sandlot. <laughs> uh Cop and a Half. This is a uh, Burt Reynolds. And a, a small person. Yes. Oh no, not a no, like a child. Like a child, yeah. Yeah. And they were yeah, that's well, who uh, was it? Was that? Was it Emmanuel Lewis? Who was it? No, but it was uh it was a, a black kid, oh but I don't okay. remember the actor's name. Okay. Um The Adventures of Huck Finn, which was a uh, another remember children's remember movie. That one very well either. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles three. Uh, Turtles in Time? Is that Turtles in Time? Or Turtles, it was... That's the I think it is. Game. I think it is Turtles yeah, in Time. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, And then The Crush, which was... Alicia uh, Silverstone? I think you're right. I think that was her first movie, right? Yeah. Uh, The Crying Game, 
Uh huh. Point of No Return. Don't remember that one at it's all. It's Bridget Fonda, I think. Unforgiven. Okay, that's uh, wrapping up, I assume. And then, um, yeah, 36th. No, it wasn't wrapping up. 36th week, and that's beyond wrapping up yeah. at that point. By the way, Crying Him, 20th week. Unforgiven had all, it must have got re released because it had already won the Oscar. I think it was probably, I yeah. think it had just kept, st- you know how I remember back then? If yeah. it, one best picture, you'd see it in theaters for another two months. Yeah. And then, uh, in number 11 is Groundhog Day, which was in its ninth wrapping week. Wrapping up as well, yeah. yeah. Uh, 93. Um, 93 was carried by uh, Jurassic Park later in the summer. Yeah. I mean, Jurassic what, a, Park. what a year for Spielberg, right? Directs yeah. Schindler's, oh, Schindler's List yeah. and Jurassic Park the same year. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, you know, that's, um, the difference here though, that came out in April. Uh, Little Beagle came out in middle of the summer. Yeah. Which is a baseball movie. It can come out in April as part of opening day or it can come out in the summer either yeah. way. Well, I think what happened, so they do score studios when they do a movie, they'll have audiences check it out and yeah. they'll score how they feel about it. Uh, in Castle Rock, their production uh, studio here has done many movies that you'd remember, you'd know. A lot of movies right, you, yeah. are very popular, very good, high quality. This Little Big League had the highest score ever in one of their uh, testings. In fact, it was so high that they, oh, something went wrong. You got 100%. Basically, everyone loved it. So, all right, bringing people in, got 98%. They did it again. They got 100% again. Right. Like, it was just so, like, this is going to be a monster hit. This is going to be so huge. That's why they put out in the summer. Because where did you hear what that was up against? Yeah, the summer of '94 was crazy. I'm gonna just I'm just gonna guess there was a I think there was a Die Hard in there. Was there a Speed? Was Speed out? I'm, well, the pro- big problem was Lion King. Yeah, um, Lion King King took all the kids. Yes, and then Speed was out in the theaters at that point. Um, the Flintstones was out in the theaters. That movie not very that good. Was a but huge. Made movie. a lot of money. Yeah, uh, Maverick uh, was out and opened in tenth place. Yeah, it did not do much. It didn't do business. Lion King really hurt it. Yeah. It didn't do business, uh, and it, it's a shame because these movies should at least be on equal footing. Th- but but Sandlot holds such a more a bigger place in Americana and and in people's hearts, and I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's right. The Sandlot is a good movie. It is uh, is a movie like you said about growing up and about your friends and about that magical summer, that magical time. Let's break down the Sandlot, and I'll tell you my issues with it. Okay. I don't feel like it's a, a movie so much as it is a series of like six skits. And then it says, you know what? All right, we're done with the skits. And now we're going to the ending. And the ending takes forever. The The chase with the beast. I think the ending is bad. Um, there's nothing. He's getting chased by a dog through the town. And it's just, it's just weird. It's and I feel like it's antithetical to the rest of the movie. I know it's them up against the big thing that they're fighting. Um, but you know the the skits are you know he 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 moves to the town, and then he he has his first trip to the Sandlot. He eventually starts to win them over. the The good player Benny the Jet Rodriguez takes him in, um, and 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 now they have they they play the the other the the mean kids the rich kids in the uniforms. They go to the pool. They go to the fair. They have maybe a couple more. That's tree it. Tree house. The tree house. It goes scene, 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 yep. scene. Nothing really ties them together. No. It's just like they came up with six ideas. All right, let's put the kids in this scenario now. Now let's put them in this scenario. And all right, well, the movie's about over. Let's just have him get chased by the dog. There's no real, real meaty script here. No. I agree. At I, all. I agree with that. And I don't think the story, it's a lot like Caddyshack. There's no real movie to Caddyshack. It's just memorable because how funny it is and how, and the great lines. This is just memorable because it puts the kids in great situations. Like I, I, the scene with Wendy Peppercorn and him drowning himself intentionally to to kiss her is incredible, but it's not really that good of a movie. No. So I'm usually, this is kind of antithetical to what I usually want in a movie. Usually I want in a movie a great story. Yeah. That's the most important thing to me. Yeah. Even more important than acting, than direction, is I love a good story. Right. This doesn't really have a story. In fact, the only common bond, I guess, is like a thin one of like baseball. But that's really this is really about camaraderie. It's about these kids all being together and being friends. And it's, you know, you think back of like how you remember your favorite summers or your times in your life. It doesn't happen in like a cohesive story. It does kind of happen in segments, like in, okay. in blocks. So I have heard this explained to me in adulthood better. When I say this, it doesn't have a story and, and some of the stuff is outlandish. Like when Scotty Smalls first gets welcomed into their group, he can't throw a ball. He right. can't catch a ball. He can't do anything. And Benny takes him aside and has him takes him to the outfield and says, hold your glove up. Right. And Benny the Jet then goes and he hits the ball from home plate into his glove. And all of a sudden after he catches that ball – 
he throws it in, and he can just play baseball right. now. And that's less, I've been explaining, that's less of what really happened. That's more of what that guy remembers. Yes. So if you look at it through that, but right. if you don't consciously look at it through that prism, it's very stupid. It, um, I, I don't know if I'd say it's stupid. So, but a bit to, to that effect, though, like the July Fourth, I think yeah. it's a great example of this is someone's memory, not necessarily one hundred percent reality. Right. The fireworks going off. You know, how long would those fireworks go off? Maybe right. 10, 15 minutes. You never really play a full game in there. Yeah. But he's explaining like, it's a game, and he, you see the visuals, and and this is important, and this might be kind of goofy to you, or whatever. But like the colors in this movie yeah. are very important. Like the everything is super bright, right? And like. Everything. Now, I know it was 1962 when things were kind of like people had more brighter colors than maybe we yeah. wear today. But even the like the cars pop, you can just tell like the way they shot it. It's very much, it's very like visually bright, like it's almost overwhelmingly so. It's not, it's his memories. And it's just how he looks back at this time. And that all works. Now, your other point, the third act is not good. They, there's so many, it just takes way too long. You, you know, they, they keep all these different stuns to try to get the ball yeah but uh, by the third one you're like all right guys just get the ball already and there's three more after that way too long this movie could easily be trimmed up this one could be you know, a little bit could be trimmed up a little bit too but uh that it, that third act is not particularly great but then when you meet samuel jones samuel uh earl jones it does samuel james earl jones why mm-hmm. i say that james earl jones it does really connect again though and i do like that i thought the character of james earl jones is it feels tacked on it, like uh, I, I, I don't know. It, it like happens to be a big, great, big time X ball player, and I don't know that whole thing. Um, the beast turns out to just be a dog. I like that. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't know. It's just not something. I put it like this: If you saw this at thirteen, and you saw this at thirteen, you have certain emotional attachments to it. Mm-hmm. If somebody picked up both of these movies right now. With no emotional attachment, I don't see how this one would ever, the Sandlot would ever be viewed as better than Little Big League. This needs the emotional, this needs you to have seen it when you were a kid. The Sandlot does. It needs you desperately to have seen it when you were a kid. Unless it's banking on you tying everything that happens to you when you were a kid. I think that's what it's, it's the more the latter. Yeah. I think adults could have seen this movie. I know adults saw it when I, you know, when it came out and they enjoyed it, but they're, cause they're thinking back of their time. You mentioned the dog. So this is, so when I was a kid growing up in Long Island, we thought for sure, us kids thought this woman who lived in this white house yeah. was a witch. Right. And we started, to, you know, eventually it's tall tale to tall tale. And we're yeah. all, oh, I saw her casting, you know, ends up she was a woman who was cancer and she just didn't leave her house very much. Yeah. But we, in our mind, and by the end of, you know, by the time, you know, we tell enough witch stories, you kind of believe it. Yeah. And I can understand how you believe this dog well, is a beast. Turns out that you guys were just real assholes. <laughs> yeah. This poor woman was dying of cancer right. in her house, and you called her a witch for well, it. Well, we didn't call it to her face, but we all Of course you did, but, but we it, it like, makes hot. you more of an asshole. Yes. We didn't know she had cancer. We thought, we just, we went to witch for some reason. I, Y'all know that, that, that witch that lives down the block? Oh, yeah. She's got <laughs> non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Right. Yeah, what a bitch. We never said you a bitch, but we were scared of her. A lot of fear. Um, you know, ultimately, The Sandlot is it, 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 it is a very comfortable movie. It's a warm blanket movie. Yes. It's one of those uh, where, where you can throw it on. You can throw a Sandlot on at any time and enjoy it and 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 be whisked back. And you, it's one of those, It's to me, it's a, it's a part-time movie where if I throw The Sandlot on, I'd, I'd never finish it. I watch the first 45 minutes. Once, he, once they start... Uh, I I want to say what the last baseball scene is. It's when maybe it's, when they play those kids those, when they, like, the when kids they play the kids. But then after that, it's the carnival where they throw up. Yeah. But after that, they're 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 playing baseball. Ham Porter hits a home run. It's a uh, you know, it's their last ball. Scotty says, "Oh, I got a ball." Goes yeah. and gets the Babe Ruth ball. As soon as he goes and gets the Babe Ruth ball, that movie's over to me. I don't have to watch anything longer. And for a movie that doesn't really have a story, you can do that with this, right? Because you, you can pick it up, watch it, and it put really, it down. And I think that also helps for its longevity because it certainly is. I think you'd agree culturally, it has aged much better than Little Big League. Yeah. Now, Little Big League has, certainly has a fan base. I'm not, but it, but Sandlot is like you said, it's just renowned. When you say it, it, the, it aged by not aging, it doesn't age. No, this movie doesn't age. But I bet it's also been on cable a million times, and you can yeah. jump in whenever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Now, let me let me start getting to the Little Big League and okay. why I love it a little bit more. This is uh, a kid's baseball movie, but this is very much – this is 100% a baseball movie. Yes. It's a major league baseball movie. Yes. Uh, the concept is far out and fantastical, mm-hmm. but – 
and they, the, put the Sandlot aside, there were three movies really with, with major league ties made in about a two year stretch, little big league angels in the outfield rookie of the year. Right. This is significantly the best one of the three and significantly the least successful. And there's no even question about that. This is better than rookie of the year. It's better than angel in the outfield. And it didn't do a 10th of the business of either of those. So this movie needs more respect. I mean, he's more love. Billy Haywood, he's 11 years old. His grandfather owns the twins. He dies, inherits the twins, eventually makes himself manager. There's your story. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in inside that story is a wonderful, incredible baseball and great characters. The Minnesota Twins, they, they play in the Metrodome. This is like being transported to Major League Baseball in 1993. Yeah. Uh, you see Pudge Rodriguez. You see Wally Joyner. You see all these guys in Major League Baseball. You see King Griffey Jr. and Randy Johnson. And the Twins are comprised of of baseball players. Um, Blackout Gatling is played by um, Brad the Animal Leslie, right? Yes. Um, the Kevin, Ke- Elster. Kevin Elster's in there. I mean, this is the middle of his career when he was one of the best defensive players Correct. in baseball. Like and and the and and you think of a kid's movie and you watch Angel in the Outfield and you have you have outfielders you know heliporting to to yeah. catch a ball rookie of the year you got a kid throwing 130. This baseball played in this movie is maybe the best pure baseball ever played in a movie. I I, I might even go a step further. You think it is? I think not only is it the pr- probably the best pure baseball played in a movie I'll even say it might be the best sports sports we've seen in a movie. I because everyone in so even the outfielders I didn't I did some research before I yeah. they played like college ball like everyone had some sort of like baseball pedigree and unlike Miracle which is probably like a movie that has great athleticism as well I feel like a little big league that it's better actors. Yeah, uh, the the only because Miracle's probably right right there. The with only this. actors actors that play ball on this team is uh, Jonathan Silverman, I believe. Yep. Uh, he he and he looks fine. And then um, uh, Luke Collins is played by Timothy, by Timothy Bus- Busfield, who but he played like semi pro. Timothy Busfield can play. Yes. Timothy Busfield can play ball. He's there's also one, there's one move where, like they're doing like around the horn and he throws it the catcher and he he puts some some salt yeah. on it and it. it well, moves. they show an entire relay from the wall. Yes. And they have a tracking camera. The ball hits the wall. The right fielder goes to get it, and they do a beautiful tracking uh, kind of shot, going following the relay from the right fielder to the first baseman and the first baseman to the home. And the the baseball is is fantastic. is is great. Leon Durham from the Cubs is yeah. in this movie. Uh, it's just it's the best baseball ever captured on screen for a movie. I mean, there's a double play where. <laughs> Elster like flips the glove to yeah. the second baseman. It's a, it doesn't sound like much, but it's a it would be an amazing highlight in a real game, and b for a movie to keep like we talk about like the Ed or Major League Three, yeah. and the baseball is just horrendous. This you feel like you're watching Major League Baseball, and it's all in the Metrodome. All the uniforms are right, Gooch. and um every everything just works really well. Yeah, and there's a montage. Um, there's a montage after Billy goes through some things, and 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 he finally gets the team right. When they're setting up the big last game, there's a montage of about five minutes to run around Sue. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know how they picked the song. <laughs> it's one of the. It I think it's one of the best sports movie montages ever created. Run around Sue works perfectly. Uh, the, the it shows them hitting the ball. Every hit looks like a pure hit. Every home run looks like a home run. Everything is spot on perfect. The baseball in this, if you've never watched it because it's a kid's movie, just watch it because it's legitimate Major League Baseball. That's what it looks like. Yeah, and they even get a lot of like the other stuff right. So like the locker room, it's all in the Metro room, so it's all it's the real locker room. But like yeah. there's only one thing they get wrong, and by that point, you're so invested in the, how correct they're getting everything right. It, it actually pissed me off. What do they get wrong? Ricky Henderson thing. Yeah, they get that wrong. Um, so that's one of the cruxes of the movie. Uh, it sets off a um, sets off a disagreement between Billy, the owner, and the manager. It's like May. It's like in the season. It's mm-hmm. like May. Right, middle of the season. Middle of the season, and the commissioner's office is calls the Twins and says Ricky Henderson has just been deemed a free agent, and that just that doesn't happen. It literally cannot happen. That, in the that CBA. cannot I mean, happen unless he was released. But this is not what so. Happened. So they use that as a crux of the movie. So that, that's the one thing they get wrong. Ricky Henderson would never be a free agent in May. It would never happen like that. But you know, you I think I can forgive that a little bit. They needed something to happen off the field to to. I do. just wish it because I guess and I just you end up holding this movie to such a high standard because for a kids movie, it's remarkably intelligent. And at that point, you're like, all right, you know, I, I just, I just held them to a 
a higher level. I also don't think Ricky Henderson in 1993 becoming a free agent isn't going to alter a franchise. Maybe in 90, 91. I mean, he literally went to a team in 1993 and they won the World Series. So, Well, they won the World Series in 92. It's I know. Like he, didn't, he, he didn't alter didn't a earn. franchise. He didn't alter a franchise. Well, you don't have he to make that M- face. I mean, he won the MVP. And not in 93? No, but like a couple years earlier. He's a pretty great I don't know. A great player. I, just I mean, think. at that time, he was pretty awesome. So. They could have used a better, better. Like if Frank Thomas became a free agent in 93, or Juan Gonzalez, that's a bigger deal. Renzo, do you agree? No, not 93. I would say uh, Henderson above Gonzalez, but I put Thomas ahead of Henderson. Gonzalez won the MVP in 93. Did he in 93? 93 and 98. Mm. Which Juan Gonzalez winning the MVP in 98 is one of the more forgotten things in the history of baseball. <laughs> well, Juan Gonzalez's whole career, I think, is kind of forgotten about. It is. He was something. He was, but it was all... Oh well, yeah, but it, all of it was. So. I don't know, a lot of it was, but yeah, I think out of out of people who are steroid guys, I think he almost like his career is like erased more than most. Like I forgot he won ninety three. Yeah, it's a very erased career. Yeah, um, but there's several of them. Like King Caminiti's career is is erased. Yeah, but even he though he's like the first guy that came out well, he with died. steroids, and yeah. he's that. But like yeah. Gwen Gonzalez, I feel like has been like wiped away. Um, I love this movie. It's one of my favorite movies. If I wrote a list of my ten favorite movies, Little Big League is on there. Again, you always get your face furrowed because when I say it's one of my favorite movies, you, you like to think your favorite movies are just the best movies. I agree. This isn't better than Shawshank Redemption. It's not better than certain movies. It's one of my 10 favorite movies that have ever been made. It's one of, if if I'm going off to a desert island for, for, for the rest of my life, I can take 10 DVDs. This is in it. It just is. I love it that much. Okay. So here's an issue I have. And issues are a strong word because let me explain what I'm talking about. All right. You cannot like baseball, not know much about baseball, and still really enjoy the Sandlot. I don't know. If you, there's no way you can enjoy a little big league unless you really like baseball. See, I don't really understand that. It's it's still a young kid who's thrown into a big situation uh, and who has to work through his his problems and his issues and, and ends up coming out a, a victor even though he loses in the end. Yeah. Um, I There's still – there's this story is better than that story. Yeah, well, you can understand the story. We more. already said the sandlot doesn't really have a story. Though. Yeah, this is a more clear story. This, there's a story to this movie. Yeah, there's it's not an Oscar-winning story, no. but it's a story. It's a story, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I like. like I I think you can watch this movie. I think it's more premise-based, and it's, so what I like about this, what I like about Little Big League, which by the way is a very good movie, so I'm not going to disagree with you too much on that. Um, Little Big League has a ridiculous premise, right? Yeah, it's just stupid. It like, is. Twelve year old becomes it's owner crazy. It's and crazy. his manager is dumb, but they knew that. Yeah, they 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 will they complete it. So they're like, all right, if this is true, they have to make everything else as real and authentic as possible. The characters can't be too outlandish. Timothy Busfield in this movie is so good. Yeah, he's, he's so, so grounded. He's kind. He's believable. But then at times, like you know, when Billy's kind of treating him kind of shitty, you can tell he's unhappy about it. But he's not going to yell at a kid. Like you see, well, by that point, point, he's also kind of Billy's leader because he's dating his mom. Yeah, and yeah. and that's complicated. And you can see some of the hesitancy there. Everyone is playing it like real human. Yes, it's a ridiculous premise, but everyone is playing it like real people. But when they when they came out with that ridiculous premise, it could have been goofy. Oh, it could yeah. have been stupid. It could have been, but it's not. It's it's played straight and it's good. And and, and like you, Timothy Busfield, by the way, underrated as fuck. Yeah, Field of Dreams. He's great. He's awesome. side character, but he's great. Incredible. He's great in this. He's great in the West Wing. Like Timothy Busfield is just good. In a show called Thirty Something. Never the saw it, but I'm aware of it. Yeah. yeah, but it's like he he's just a good ass actor. Yeah. Really good, and, and he's a good. He was in Field of Dreams. He was in this. Like he's a, he's got a couple of good sports movie chops. Uh, he's fantastic he's in this. so good in this um now i let there's a couple things before we put these movies right up against each other i want to do mvps for both movies okay and maybe lvps yep. if something bothered you about it so mvp of the sandlot which is really tough i think both these movies are tough to come an mvp on yeah because they're both more ensemble i know little bigly has a lead but the lead is is somewhat yeah. weak uh, he's the kid's fine. He didn't do too much, which is yeah. all you can ask. What's his name? Lucas something? Yeah, let me get his name. Here. Lucas Taylor? Not Lucas Taylor. Is it Lucas Taylor? I don't think so, but you might be right. It's Lucas something. And he would go on. He, he didn't Luke, do much. Uh, Edwards. Luke Edwards. Yeah. Luke Edwards is, is Billy Haywood. Right. Um, but he gets surrounded by some some good actors. Uh, yes. The guy that plays Taggart in Beverly Hills Cop. Yes, John Axton. John, who's he, very good. Yeah. Uh, he's in there. Uh, like I said, Timothy Busfield's good. Yeah. Jensen Daggett, not in this movie. Not in this movie. Jason Robards in the first like 10 minutes. Jason Robards, Oscar winning actor. He's so, I mean, if you haven't seen Magnolia, see Magnolia. It's an unbelievable performance by Jason Robards. It's so good. But he, but. You think that's his best performance? Uh, all the President's Men. Yeah. Not all the Oscar, yeah. I just, uh, the Magnolia stuff. 
I've never seen Magnolia. Oh, it's, uh, Tom Cruise is his son. His dad died of cancer. It's, it's all. It's like, oh my god, it's just really unbelievable. Uh, the movie's too long. Gooch is Magnolia good? Mm. It's a mess of a movie. It's a, that's what I was about to say. It's just a mess. But it has some amazing stuff in it. All time Tom Cruise fit. <laughs> Okay. Uh, the Philip Seymour Hoffman is like the nurse to Jason Robards. Is you just he's so tender, you care so much. Oh, right, let's focus. Very good. Um, but Robards, is, but the fact that Robards in this movie, like he's, I know James Earl Jones is in this, but I don't know. Robards is so good in the role. It's so grounded. Yeah. Everyone is playing it so honestly. It makes everyone more likable. You know. Movie that had less brains, people would be goofier or wackier. Yeah, right. You see some of it with like the Jonathan Silverman stuff. He's comic relief, but I I don't think he's over the top with it. I don't think he like he he's your goofy bullpen reliever. But I think he, I think it's played right. I think it's just the right amount of he's a little bit different than everybody else without being uh he's in a different movie. So what are we gonna do? MVP? Who's the MVP of the Sandlot? I gotta get the kid's name. It's probably the kid that plays Benny the Jet. I, like he he's not a great actor, obviously. Yeah. Um, but he Mike Vitar. I, I mean, just, he's the center of that. He he's he's the guy that's that, that kind of holds that whole group together. He's the one that brings in Scotty Smalls. Like he, I understand the character. He just he's very natural, and he looks like a ball player. And he and he, I just believed him. And yeah. I, I know Thomas Geary, who plays the lead. He can be a little too kid actory at yeah. times. It's a little bit all right. Yeah. And, and you get some a little of that, too wide eyed, little too yeah, like a little too much. Yeah. And you get that with some of the other kids too. Um, but I always felt like Benny is always, I don't know, always like really grounded. And I believed him. First of all, special shout out to, uh, whoever you are that played Wendy Peppercorn. The second I saw you, I fell in love. I think we all did. Wendy Peppercorn, uh, tremendous, tremendous highlight of this movie. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's Benny the Jet could be the guy, you know, Ham Porter's also very, very, very funny, very funny, yeah. funny. But I, I think you ultimately you you gotta you kind of gotta give it to the kid that played Scotty Smalls because the movie revolves around him. Yeah, Thomas but really, is a little, a little really the MVP of this this isn't a, th- there's everybody gets shots. Yes, everybody scores points. Right. This is a this is a group effort, and that's the point of the movie. It's almost uh, maybe the casting director could be the MVP. I I have no problem with that. I think also I know David Mickey Evans hasn't had a great career, but I think this is just wonderfully directed. I just think like. Karen Allen and Dennis Leary are great as the parents. Maybe this, maybe the the setting and the scenery could be the MVP of this movie because the, the the neighborhood it's, they picked and the, everything. You is, know, it's you know it happened summer of sixty two, which yeah. is a year before Kennedy gets shot, and it's you know Beatles haven't been to America yet. It's like kind of this. I mean, they nail suburban California in nineteen sixty two. I would assume. Funny, and it's shot yeah. in Utah. It, I didn't know the whole that. movie shot in Salt Lake, and I I went to Utah last year, and I was going through some of the areas, and yeah. that's why those cool mountains are always in the distance. That's yeah. all the mountains in Salt Lake City. Okay, well that makes a, that, yeah, it's yeah. interesting. But I guess they did it because it does replica. It is a good replica repli- replication of Southern California in the sixties. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think I would give it to um, whoever I cast been, this movie. I think that's great because yeah. honestly, because you know, one of the things we do is a trade. Yeah. I can't think of a trade for either movie because this is both are cast so well. Well, I you know if I if I'm looking at like, like if I need the 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 fat catcher who's a little braggadocious and kind of they nailed that one. Mm-hmm. Um, Benny the Jet Rodriguez, they nailed that yeah, one. Yeah. They nailed Scotty Smalls. They did. Squints Polidors, nailed it. Oh yeah. So, like I think whoever cast this movie is. The, I, I have no MVP problem. With it. I think it's a great MVP. Now who's the MVP of this movie? For me, it's like, Busfield. Yeah. Um, he just grounds the movie so well. He's so he's a star player, Luke Collins, uh, and he ends up dating uh, by the end of the movie, uh, getting engaged to be married to his mom, Billy's mom. Which on paper you hear that and you just roll Sounds your eyes. Stupid, yeah, like, this is so dumb. But they and uh, his mom is played by Ashley Crow, who, by the way, her son Pete Crow Armstrong is a top prospect in the Cubs. Yeah, he was with the Mets. He got traded for Hobby. Got Bias. drafted a couple years ago. Yeah, not number one draft pick for the Mets. Um. I'm gonna give it to Lucas Edwards. I I, I think I it, when I watch when I watch um, Rookie of the Year and 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 see and that that guy went on to other things. It's just so goofy. Like he he's just a normal kid. He and he's a normal kid at all times. At no point does he ham it up. At no point nope. does he does he yuck yuck. At no point does he like. Oh my God, I'm just so scared. He's a normal ass kid, and that's not that easy to do. He's surrounded by Major League Baseball players. 
Like he's not surrounded by nobodies. He's surrounded. He's doing scenes with Ken Griffey Jr. For God's sake. He's asked to carry an entire movie on his shoulders, and that's means like with Thomas Geary, who had more experience when he did the same. Got life. other kids around him, and also like he sometimes would ham it up. Yeah. Where you got to give a good words credit. Now sometimes I feel you almost like downbeat it too much. It's like yeah. all right, we need something a little bit more here, but. Uh, all in all, he does a fine job. He certainly doesn't. He doesn't. I don't think he adds a ton to the movie, but he does not detract from it. I think, in a in a lesser child actor's hands, that that this movie that falls apart. I agree completely. And I think he's fine. So I think he's the MVP. Although I like Luke Collins as well. Least valuable player in either of these? Does anybody drag it down? I don't think any movie really gets dragged down. I think Jonathan Silverman in a little big league. You I don't think, like that character. No, it's too goofy for for goofy's sake. I don't really know where like where he's coming from. I know he's like by the end but of the movie, very he's smart. But I think a counterbalance to Brad the Animal Leslie, who's a, a maniac, and then uh, Mike McGreevy, who's just a tightwad free agent, a uh, tightwad asshole. Yeah, he's just loosening up the clubhouse. But I just although they got two of them because there's another one, the right fielder, uh, Tucker Tuck. Um, he's also uh, um um. I, I just I cannon. just found him to be annoying. Also, like this is the second time I found him annoying. He's Caddyshack too, of course. You don't love the scene where they're in the hotel and they're throwing water balloons on everybody. I don't mind it. Yeah. My issue is like he's like, and then he's like this genius at the end of the movie. I don't like. What are you like? I don't understand what his. Okay. I feel like in a movie where characters are really grounded, he's a cartoon character. I'm gonna run through these four categories. Okay. As we put these movies up against each other. Okay. Because I think you're gonna say the same lots better, and that's fine. Um, and then we'll score them at the end. Which movie, which of these two movies is more rewatchable? I get, I have to say the Sandlot because I've just seen it so many times and it's, and it, I think it's built for rewatchable. And that's not a compliment either, by the way. It's because there's no real story. You can jump in and jump yeah. out. So I'm, I'd say the Sandlot. I've seen Little Big League more. I'm going to give it the slight edge, although they are both eminently rewatchable. And the Sandlot is probably seen by a lot of people as one of the more rewatchable movies yeah. ever made. So which, which movie has the better baseball? Oh, Little Big League has it probably wins us against everybody. Uh, other than Miracle, find me a movie that has better sports scenes. And, and I, I and I I think this puts Miracle to shame too because when they stop skating, they have to act a little bit, and they don't do it as well as these guys do. They they found I'll say this they did a hell they did a job like no one else to find athletes that can act. Yeah, great job there. Which of these two movies has the better cast? I guess I, I'd say the Sandlot. They, they to to get all of these kids right and all of them work. That's really hard to end. Listen, not only that, but you get the adults right too. I, James Earl Jones, I think he's really good in that. And then you have the parents, uh, Karen Allen and uh, and Dennis. I know we talked about it briefly, but they're both really good in this. Dennis Leary especially can be really annoying at, in certain movies. He dials all the way back, and I believe he's this 1962 dad, stepdad. Was that the first time we saw Dennis Leary in a spot like this? Yeah, in a spot like this. Yes. Yeah. Right. Where, he, I mean, where he's, he's a stand up. Where he's a bit character, and he and he's not. Uh, he's grandiose like, and he's not like uh, in your face and right. not all that um, which is the better made movie the better made movie is Little Big League uh, we didn't talk about the director at all which is a, which is a shame I think his name is I want to get his name right Andrew Scheinman the reason I don't know his name I apologize is because he's only directed one movie his whole career it's this one and he was mostly he got nothing after this. He mostly was a producer, so he yeah. still worked in Hollywood. He produced a lot of good movies, but he just never directed again. And I don't know why, because everyone said this was a great set to be on. Both of these sets, both is funny. I was reading the like oral histories and stuff of both. Yeah. Both casts were saying this was the greatest summer of my life. You've seen there's an oral history somewhere of this yeah. of Little Big League. Yeah. I've read the oral history of Sandlot. Yeah, there's one of. Uh, Oh. It was back on Grantland or something, or back when they had that. Mm -hmm. I've never seen the oral history. Yeah, I guess. Oh, sorry, it wasn't summer. It was like winter, I guess. Yeah. And that's the reason they chose. It's supposed to be the Royals. They chose the Twins because it has a dome. Inside, yeah. Um, but they basically were given the keys, and they could run around. They could do whatever they wanted in the whole stadium. They let them do whatever they wanted. The, and the state. They, they, they really make great use of the stadium too. Like, Incredible yeah. use. Great. I mean, and they do a great job even with the crowd. So I guess that last scene when um. Uh, the manager, Luke Edwards, waves his hat to the crowd. Cap, yeah. They actually was a real sold out. It was uh, after a real Twins game. They had Fan Appreciation Day. And they had it completely okay, they sold brought out. To do that? Okay. And, they, and they did it there. But they nail everything right. So the better made movie is is um, is Little Big League. Sandlot is well made, but Little Big League is a, All a right, better we're, we're, look, Score the Sandlot for me. On the Chris Klemmer official rankings. 92. Wow. Yeah, I really love this movie. <laughs> and a lot of it, 
if you know we talk about i give you a lot of shit for some of your oh it's not one of the greatest movies yeah I'm probably this is what I'm kind of guilty of where it has also nostalgia. I grew up with my friends. We all did this. This is your exception to your rule. This huh? is my I felt like, you know, I have just so many and I'm sure a lot of people watch this have the same reaction, but I had my buddies. And luckily a lot of us are still buddies today and we talk about going and playing wiffle ball together and playing baseball every day. You play until the, the street lights come on, you go yeah. home. I and we we go to the lake and we yeah. see the pretty girls. It was great. Little Big League is a fantastic movie that is is maybe the best kids movie about baseball. Don't you think Little Big League deserves more acclaim than it gets? Yes. Okay. There we go. Absolutely. So I would score the same lot. I'm going to put it like 82. So it's a good movie. It's an enjoyable movie. Mm-hmm. My my only beef with it is that this the Little Big League deserves Sandlot spot in my opinion. I think Little Big League is better. What are you going to give? And whenever I say Little Big League is better than Sandlot, people think, oh, he hates the Sandlot. That's not true. Well, no, because you say that. You'll be like, the Sandlot sucks. I've heard you say, like, I've never said the Sandlot sucks. You said it's bad. You say, no, you have said it. I've said the Sandlot as a movie is not a great movie. It's not a great movie. It's it's an enjoyable time. But again, I said earlier, it doesn't have a story. So you must think it's very good. I like the Sandlot. You you I, I like you like it more than you want to admit. I like the Sandlot. I love Little Big League. If Little Big League never existed, you'd be so much higher than the Sandlot. I think that's fair. I think that's very true. Uh, Little Big League's better in every single way. Every single way. I love Little Big League. Little Big League. I'm. So what are you giving Little Big League? What's your score for that? Ninety four. All right. I love Little Big League. I don't know that. It's it's a top five baseball I mean, movie I don't, for me. I don't have it that high, but it's I understand. It's the most underrated yeah. baseball movie. It's the most underrated sports movie. Might be the most underrated movie. Outside underrated that, kids movie. That thing you do. It's 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 one of my favorite movies. It's one of my ten favorite movies. Uh, I'm gonna give Little Big League eighty three. So that's fair too. Really good movie. Uh, if you've never seen it, you absolutely should watch it. If you like '90s baseball, you don't need to so be. So you kid. went, you went '92, '83. Yeah. I went '82, '94. Yeah. So we just flip them. Very. Yeah, just flip yeah. them. But the, at the end of the day, though, we both, I think, really, I know, I'll be kinder than you, but I, we both really like and respect both movies a ton. You have to, in order to give Big League, Little Big League the respect it deserves, I have to put it up against the Sandlot. But when you really compare it to its peers, which were Angels in the Outfield exactly. and Rookie of the Year, it's way fucking better. It's not close. This is at least a discussion because people realize how good this is. I remember enjoying Angels in the Outfield. I also remember it not being nearly as bright as yeah. Little Big League. Little Big League is a very intelligent movie for kids. If you have kids, if you have like a, like a son or daughter who really likes baseball, have them watch this. It's a smart movie. It's 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 just good. All right, that was fun. There you go. And next week we're back. We're gonna do this format again, right? Yes. We're gonna put two movies against each other. Yes. Two Adam Sandler movies. This is the first time we're doing two different sports. That's true. We're doing uh, Happy Gilmore and The Water Boy. That's right. We could have done uh, Citizen two football movies. I don't know. Well, yeah, but I don't make me watch The Longest Yard again. Yeah, the remake isn't. Yeah. Unless maybe one day we watch the longest yard, the longest yard. Yeah, that might have to happen. But, um, but yeah, but yeah. So Waterboy, which is, I think people would agree, is the most more famous of his football movies, and yeah. Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore, say one of his most famous movies. Yeah, second big movie behind Billy Madison. No, Billy Madison came out first. They yeah. came out next, and then the third movie is the one that made him a super superstar, which is Wedding Singer. What is deemed the biggest Adam Sandler movie? The Fifty First Dates. Well, I mean, based on box office or based on like I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, they made a like Broadway like what do you think was a Broadway musical? Yeah, it's kind of, kind of, probably has to be that, right? Because I thought Happy Gilmore felt bigger at the time than didn't make a lot of money. Did it not? I mean, it did okay, but yeah. it made like thirty. Water million. Boy it made hu- about as much as Sandlot. The Water Boy was huge. Water Boy was huge, right? Yeah. So, well, well, the Wedding Singer was the movie that kind of made him super big, and then I'm anxious to watch Happy Gilmore. I watched one time in the '90s. I enjoyed it, but it did not stick with me. Okay, Water Boy. I remember loving at the time, watching it again when I got it on video and being like, well, this ain't great. So I'm anxious to revisit both of them. Happy Gilmore. I've seen a bunch since it came out. Yeah. I think it's just fantastic. Uh, I have not seen Waterboy since I saw it in the theaters the day it came out, whatever, whenever. Did you That'll enjoy it when out. you saw it? You just never desired to see it again? Or did you, even then you were like, eh. I, I have to go rewatch it. I, I want to, I'll withhold my opinion until next week. All right. This was a good show. I think so. I think, I think, I mean, you get to do a show with me, which is great. A lot of fun for you, I'm sure. So the, close the show, please. Close the show. Close the show. No one listens to you around here. Huh? What a sad existence you have, huh? No one listens to yeah, you. Yeah, what a sad existence I have. <laughs> I'm Brandon Walker. <laughs>
You're not going to end the show? You're not going to tell them it's over? It's over. <laughs>